I'm Steve Miller. Call me Slim. And this is the Ask Slim Market Week. It's a look back at what happened in the financial markets in the past week. And a look forward at what might happen in coming weeks. And hopefully lots of great ideas and opportunities for you throughout the show. Well, the stock market rebounded sharply after a brief 4.5% drop the previous week, with major indexes coming back to the all-time highs and some beyond. Buying came into recovery stocks. Hotels, travel, financial, online payment stocks had huge gains, as did a lot of the retailers. The speculative, the speculative squeeze we saw in the stocks just the previous a couple of weeks, well, they got crushed. The GameStop lost uh, all the way down about 90% of the gains it had, coming back to reality from nearly $500, falling to down to as low as a uh, low 50s. Uh, and uh, other stocks that were in that squeeze category like COS and AMC, well, those insiders dumped stocks on those speculators like crazy. Huge amount of insider selling in there as they took advantage of that opportunity. The raid moved over to silver, uh, which had silver exploding to the upside early in the week, and that failed as COMEX uh, raised those margins and uh, those speculators realized that, well, maybe it wasn't quite time to pull off that kind of a play and roll their uh, gains that uh, they had from these other stocks into silver. That time may come, but uh, it just was certainly not this week. So as far as those, those particular stocks, and I think that whole big play about the mob action, um, I think that's over right now. And uh, we may see, see that uh, Reddit uh, gang go over after some other stocks. And recently heard, uh, as early as today, they were uh, pointing at some pharmaceutical stocks that had some pretty good gains. Uh, but overall, uh, they've got to really get in and out fast on these because, uh, as you saw in, the game, in GameStop and these other ones, many of them who came late to the game got sucked in and sucked out. Uh, stocks marched up from the early beginning of the week uh, as Monday saw that big silver move uh, brought buying into the metals and material stocks overseas. So those markets, uh, foreign markets, got big gains uh, and that uh, lifted the market on Monday. It was Tuesday was the, week, the day that the recovery stocks, uh, all of those uh, stocks that have um, kind of languished and now we're getting some bids. Those are the ones that led the market to the upside on Tuesday. And we hardly had any down hours at all this whole week, actually. Uh, so that was really strong then. Wednesday, we saw great earnings out of Google and Amazon uh, lift the markets uh, overnight. But then the news came out that Bezos was stepping down as uh, Amazon CEO, and that stopped the Amazon rally. So Amazon didn't do that well on its earnings, though Google did very well. And that did help the market uh, as Thursday the markets got a lift also. Also on Thursday helping the markets was Mitt Romney. It seems like he caught the attention of investors who feast on the government giving away money as he proposed $4,200 a year for kids between newborn and five years old and then $3,000 a year for every kid uh, who is uh, between six and the age of 17. So all of that money uh, just flying out of the government, like uh, we could just give away any amount we want. Uh, and uh, of course, Mitt came out and said that that would be paid for by, by eliminating other programs. And uh, I think he's lost his mind because that won't happen. Um, we never, ever put a program out there that isn't predetermined to expire that we remove. Everything we put out there that we spend money on basically stays. And the programs he wants to uh, omit are some liberal favorites. So this is not the environment for that. But the, the stock market loved it. And you certainly got to wonder if Mitt Romney is changing teams. 
not uh, not that uh, there's anything wrong with that, as Seinfeld would say, of course, but a little bit different context to that one. Uh, but the uh, th that really stimulated investors who just love this stimulation news. Small caps surged on uh, on Thursday as the Russell moves up about two percent. Friday, um, weak jobs data did it again. It brought out more bids. Investors do love that prospect of the government staying more involved. Uh, and energy uh, gained strongly to the upside. Uh, it's the best week since October for uh, light crude. And natural gas surged to the upside, uh, helping to lift the energy stocks as frigid weather moves across the country. So the S&P 500 was up over 20. It gave up most of those gains. Uh, but uh, is now moving back to the upside as I'm doing this video. So I've gotten a lot of emails and comments lately out on social media, and they said, well, you said a correction was coming. Was that 4.5% drop? It? Was that it? You said the VIX was going to 35 to 40 in February. Well, yeah, we looked for it to double from near, uh, near 20 up near 40. Uh, and they ask, well, was that it? Um, interesting, we'll show you that uh, and when we get to the end of the show and we look at the spider chart uh, on the SPYs, uh, I'll show you that uh, intermediate corrections are not three days long. Um, they're just not. I mean, the most bullish, most favorable upside markets have intermediate uh, downside moves that generally last uh, three to five weeks is, is what you get in the most powerful periods. So that 4.5% drip uh, that we saw, drip or dip, <laughs> uh, I think it was just a shot over the bow. It warns that these levels uh, that the market has gotten up to and gotten up to again here has attracted sellers. So now is a test of the high or a bit more. It's not that unusual. So in my opinion, that, that wasn't it. Um, still, we talked about February, early March as the period of risk to the downside. And uh, while the market moves up and uh, the uh, resistances then move up, we adjust those. So we're not quite expecting it to get as low as we did before. And I'll show you that. Still in the area of 6 to 7% drop through sometime early March, mid-March is very reasonable. Uh, and I, we think the time is correct for that. So I'll show you that. I don't think this next correction is going to be the big one. Uh, though, uh, if you watch my year-end show, I talk about trouble coming later in the year, and I think that starts sometime in the summer. So uh, the uh, right now, we're still looking for that uh, kind of modest correction to the downside, February, March, uh, that uh, we think is uh, really not started yet, just a little sign of it. So right now it's uh, just coming up to uh, midday here, and uh, I have to I had to record early because I have to leave uh, because I hit the lottery uh, and uh, my number came up for the vaccine. So I got to rush out of here right now. So we decided to uh, do the show a little bit earlier today. Um, so for the stock market uh, at, so far this week, uh, after that huge move to the downside, stocks had one of the biggest upside weeks to an all-time high. Four and a half to six and a half percent were the gains in the major indexes with the rot absolutely RUT the strongest as we have a small cap surge going on. We all know historically that small cap moves are late in the game. They can come late in the game and as it's very speculative and there is no doubt we're in a speculative period right now. So that could be the sign. Uh, bonds, 30 years, uh, they move down one and three quarter points. 10 year yields move up about five basis points. We think that yields are going to briefly move back towards the 1% level. They're about 114 right now uh, for the 10 years uh, in a uh, maybe a quality flight to quality bid that comes in if we're right about the stock market correction coming up. And uh, then we think that yields are headed up and up, headed up much higher. Uh, through later in the year. Gold uh, was down um, uh, pretty uh, uh, pretty big, uh, $44 for the week uh, approximately, uh, as uh, that silver big upside move um, failed. Now we talked about gold 
was in a period of, of some risk where we thought it would be moving down and maybe even preventing the silver upside move, but that squeeze got silver going. Silver had a $4.40 range. That's massive uh, for the week and only is down about 30 cents on the week. So not that much. Uh, I'll show you in just a few minutes that the gold and silver patterns are looking like they're getting near a point where they could try the upside again. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. But overall, gold pattern is worrisome. Silver is really not, but gold is. So we'll look at that. Dollar, um, it uh, has moved up four out of the last five weeks, gains about seven tenths of a percent uh, right now. That's all about our interest rates being strong here, and that is attracting money from overseas into the U.S. Oil surges, $4.40 as the oil producing countries uh, say they're going to hold the line on production uh, at those reduced levels that they were at, and that is helping the uh, oil market and energy market. And of course, energy is also getting a lift uh, as natural gas surges, as we said, uh, as the cold weather is moving across the country. Uh, that's it for the opening here. Uh, I want to remind you that uh, if you've never been to AskSlim.com, I'm going to show you a great way to become a subscriber just in a few moments. But do go to the site and explore it. Uh, if you're new to YouTube, uh, please do subscribe to our channel on here. Click that notification bell. You'll know when we put up the videos. We do that a uh, number of times every single week. Make sure you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and follow me on Twitter at AskSlim. You have questions uh, for uh, uh, for Matt, uh, he, he can get, really give you a ton of information uh, on our huge offerings of education and analysis for people who engage in the markets, really at all level and all styles. So we have just tremendous offerings that we can bring you uh, and really help you in the markets. So uh, I want to switch over now. We're going to do something a little bit different because we're going to look at uh, what we do, what we call tools for techs. We, in our tools for techs video um, uh, segment of our library, now our library is way over 500 videos. And tools for techs, I think there's about 85 in there or so, maybe 90 videos on all different things about technical analysis. If you become a level two, three, or four member, you have access to that library. And you can just do a ton of learning. There, there's so much in there. So we're going to talk right now about breakaway gaps because this is an extremely reliable chart pattern. It's often related to um, earnings reports or corporate events, things that happen. And what happens is, is that uh, uh, the, the chart, uh, and this is on a daily chart, it gaps out of visible trends one way or the other. And it does it normally on unusual volume. I'm going to give you seven examples of this and how it starts a new trend normally. We'll look at some that happened historically uh, in the last six months or so. And then I'm going to bring you three that happened recently in what I think are some new trends. And these are the three I'm going to bring you are downtrends of stocks that I think are in a lot of trouble. And you're going to see why uh, when we look at this. So let's take a look as we switch over to the charts. And this is COPA Holdings in the uh, transportation category. So what we're looking at in here, for, for your knowledge, is uh, the COPA daily chart, candlestick chart. We're looking at the slim ribbon right in here. Now, those of you that are Thinkorswim users, um, you can uh, get the slim ribbon on our site uh, at no cost. Just go to the resources and get that, that link and you'll be able to put that up. If you don't have Thinkorswim, then you can, you can create this by using an 8, 13, and 21 bar EMA. You just won't have the coding in it. And the coding essentially gives you a colored bars, as you can see when it's positive momentum, and colored volume bars, as you see right over here. The Slim Ribbon PO is a signal indicator for the Slim Ribbon. And what it does is it shows you when it's green, you have positive momentum. And when you get the up arrows, it shows you that there is an internal correction that is over and likely to continue moving to the upside. When it's negative and you get these, it's likely to continue to the downside. 
you can see the value of that right in here. Now this is what we're really looking at right over here. So it was in a downtrend. You could see that trend line right over there. News came out right over here. You got a breakaway gap to the upside on massive volume. You could see that's the biggest volume you, you have here in this six month period we're looking back at right here. And that began a new trend. Generally breakaway gaps and high volume gaps generally start something or end something. In this case, it ended the downtrend and started an uptrend. Momentum clearly to the upside, as you can see. The slim ribbon widening as that momentum gained strength. That's very typical. And then right over here where it neutralized, it turned blue right at this point. And you can see the slim ribbon went flat and the stock really not doing much after that. But it established a fantastic trend where the stock moved up from the 60s to 86, as you can see right there. Just a solid signal when you look at that. So we're looking at breakaway gaps, and that clearly was a very powerful one. Let's look at RTX, which is Raytheon, and you can see almost the same type of a pattern in here. As it was in a downtrend or sideways trend, it broke pretty good right over here. Then it had this breakaway gap right over here on the upside. Big gap, very, very clear. Volume in here only got up to what has basically been the peak volume. So it wasn't really extraordinary, but it was higher. But it still had great value as the stock moved up from the low 60s to mid 70s right in there. And you can see again what happened as the momentum died right there. And so did the upside move in the stock. So that was really clear. I'm just showing you breakaway gaps and how we use some of our uh, other tools on there. Please disregard that um, uh, cycle bracket on the bottom because it's just kind of hanging out there and doesn't mean anything. So uh, that is the breakaway gap in Raytheon. You can see how clear that is. It even works in the ETFs. Take a look here as we look at the breakaway gap in XLF. Now, this has our cycle analysis on it. So for those of you that don't understand cycle analysis, you can go to our workshop page uh, and there's a video on there and explain to you what we do in here. But we look at the rhythms of the market. Here you could see it was just kind of finding this resistance at that short term 76. Then big volume breakaway gap away from there right there. And you can see what happened. The stock moves from the 26s up to 31. Good solid gain as momentum turned positive. As you can see right in here in all of those signals. These arrows are showing you upward rising configurations in the cycle patterns. Very, very strong look in there. Here you can see it was negative right there. <coughs> and then you get this base and it started moving up. So the breakaway came after a base. Pretty clear, uh, very, very nice gap when you look at that. And really high quality when you look at that. That's the XLF. Let's just look at XLE right here and you could see uh, a very clear uh, same thing. Here's your downward trend in here. Look at the negative momentum and the slim ribbon PO screaming at you that it was still in trouble. All of a sudden right here it neutralizes and you get the breakaway gap at the same point. Vi uh, volume really comes into the uh, XLE right there and then it continues to move to the upside moving from 32 up to 45. Huge gains really in that ETF and very very clear momentum and cyclical patterns but we're really focused on the breakaway gap. Let's just take that closer look right in there and you can see perfect action as it moves strongly to the upside. So really these are incredibly high quality uh, uh, gaps that you see and give you great messages. We're going to look now at three of them that I think are very high odds breakdowns. These are breakaway gaps to the downside. Yes, they can break away either way. And again, it's uh, coming out of a pattern and then moving to the downside. So we're going to switch here and we're going to move to CTSH, which is Cognizant Technology. And look what just happened. You can see clearly the uptrend in here. You could see the really, really clear upward momentum right in here. Here's where the slim ribbon turns neutral. And you can see that right over here after the strong gains. Slim Ribbon is the best momentum indicator I know. Add the signal indicator to it on the Slim Ribbon PO and it's just fantastic. Here you had the earnings report right over here in Cognizant and look what it did. A breakaway gap to the downside on an earnings miss. 
Here's where the momentum turns negative. And here you could see the huge volume. There are sellers in here waiting. So when I look at this, and I also see what we, we have in here is a saucer top. Saucer tops are really nice. They're very reliable. And you could see what they look like in the saucer top right in here. I forget, I draw it for you a little bit later. And look at the beautiful saucer top in there. And that is a breakaway gap, a beautiful top, breakdown of momentum, high volume and the likelihood of continued downside in there is extremely high in there. IBM, one that broke down just a little while ago, you can see the cyclical patterns in here. Cyclical patterns happen to call for another week or two on the downside in this move. There you could very clearly see the breakaway gap. Here you had positive momentum and bullish signals through this whole rally right over here. Here is your signal that it neutralized on the downside gap. It's now rallying right in here or moving sideways and really what's a bear flag? In some uh, in negative momentum conditions, you could see the slim ribbon widening on the downside right over here, and very strong likelihood this is going to move down again, and probably in several waves, as this IBM certainly looks like a breakdown. And this week, uh, Qualcomm, which of course has had G5 uh, all over it, moving it on the upside. Look at the positive momentum that we had here all through this period. Turn neutral for a little correction, turn positive again, and now neutral again. But look at this. It's going to turn negative pretty soon. Here's your breakaway gap. Look at the upward channel that it breaks away from. Take a little closer look in here. That earnings miss now sends it to the downside. Going to get a little support where that weekly support is. But cyclical patterns are suggestive. If you care about that, that this is likely to move down all the way here through sometime in the middle of March. That's kind of where we think the stock market is going to correct to. This is a really high quality breakdown in here. Cyclical breakdown, uh, momentum breakdown, high volume, uh, earnings gap to the downside. Breakaway gap that says the stock is going lower. Now, you know, when I look at things like this, like Qualcomm and IBM and CTSH that have signals right now, Remember that anything can go wrong. We believe that these, the highest quality of things that we look at are only 65-70% accurate, but still that's a huge edge. And we think that the probabilities of these three stocks, CTS, IBM, CTSH, IBM, and Qualcomm, beginning a new downtrend is extremely high when we look at that. We wanted to show you the quality of this, the quality of adding momentum into it, looking at the volume, and I think that you will um, now pay a lot more attention and maybe not fade the big high volume moves when they begin, especially when they're a breakaway gap like these. I hope you found that extremely interesting. All right, so now we're going to do a short-term uh, look at gold and silver. Lately, I've been only been bringing the intermediate patterns where we're looking at one to three months. Uh, however, when I looked at the charts this week, I said, you know, really I should bring in the short term because there's a lot of people uh, that uh, have noted that uh, and have been writing me like crazy about, you know, is, are we close to a breakdown? Is gold still okay? What does this mean for silver? So we're going to take a look at the short term patterns in gold and silver. Gold actually has gotten to a level that is worrisome. Uh, silver, not so much. So here's the gold daily pattern in here. And I'm going to blow this out to two years so that you can see a lot of these patterns. So all of those, you know, if those of you who've been following me long enough know that when there is that yellow oval, that is when you get into the period of the highest risk of, of uh, the multiple cyclical time frames pushing to the downside. And when you have patterns that are already weak, well, then there's a lot of risk. So if I just look at these last three harmonic families, as we call them right here, you can see that each of those time periods that the minor cycle right in here and the dominant cycle, the big blue one, were coming down, you got some pretty good selling that came in. This one lined up with silver here and with silver here and look with silver right in here. So you had actually silver and gold in corrective phases right in here and right in here and right in here. That's why I was concerned that the gold market would weigh on the silver market. We got a break that silver had a big burst because it, they attempted a short squeeze, the Redditors, uh, and that did not work. 
and it then came down. And as gold really gave it up um, in this period right here, that uh, is the uh, that was important. Now you see that trend line right over there. Let me just bring that right over here. So on on the weekly pattern, the daily pattern, it's pretty close to about 1767. That is the really important number. Now right over here, we got down to a low. Uh, of 1784 it got really close as it is this is worrisome because it got that close what it says is that the next rally phases as you see right in here are likely to come but they may not be able to get past this resistance zone again like it did last time we talked about the importance of that 1870 level and it just hit there and hit a wall and then started to come down. Notice in here the momentum, a negative right in here. So you had negative momentum beginning right in here and a negative signal that came right in here in the Slim Ribbon PO. Does it get any clearer than that, that the risks are high? When you get into this kind of momentum condition, in late in a pattern like this, there are downside risks. And we were concerned about that, and uh, certainly rightfully so. You can see in here that uh, as I look in this one right over here, also you had negative momentum showing up, and then this big signal right over here. This was so negative, you couldn't even get an uptick. It was so weak, you couldn't get the downside signal. So uh, where are we right now? That's what we really want to talk about. What have you done for me lately? Um, well, we're getting a little bit of an uptick. You could see it here. All the lines are kind of obscuring it. But gold is up about $16 today, trading at 1807. It's a long way from getting out of trouble. We're entering into these rising phases right over here. And again, the resistances, I have to put in the new resistances. They're going to be a little lower than this one right over here because this got lower here. So maybe it's up here in the 1830, 1850 area, but that we would expect to be able to do that over the next you know, several weeks. If if, if this isn't the bottom and it starts to free fall again and gets underneath that 1770 level, 1767, then it's going to be in a lot worse shape. And the intermediate patterns are going to turn down, and that would be, uh, that would be it, uh, maybe even for the year. I don't want to see that happen, honestly. I'd like to see it hold and heal here. And uh, that this is a very, very key time that we're looking at. So we should be able to get some upside in here, but it's too early. We're in this bottoming phase, and we don't really have a good confirmation of a bottom, and we're still in negative momentum. So that's overall, that's, that's still negative. It, even though we expect a cyclical bottom, and even though these harmonic families show unbelievable consistency in those rhythms right there, as you're looking at five of them that are fantastic, um, uh, the, the, the rally phase in each of these, as you could see, here's one right over here, was monstrous. This one was kind of small. It only hit resistance right over here. And that's possible right over here. So we needed to get this to heal and then really move to the upside in some significant way. So that's a look at gold, uh, which I would call it worrisome right now and really needing to get it going on the upside to get out of trouble. It's been in trouble at this level before and saved itself. Now we'll look at silver, which is just phenomenal. This has uh, the complex uh, cyclical structures built into it, uh, where we look at the highest probable upside moves, which is the top of this Fib extension right there at about 3035, which it nailed. Uh, and uh, then we look at the lower or average uh, move right in here, and then if it turned really weak, it would be right over here. So it either travels in the upper channel or lower channel, and it's pretty rare to do what it did right over here, where it goes way up there, gets to the upper channel, and then moves back to the lower channel and retraces all the way back to the 78.6%. So that does not speak to a lot of upside potential in here, but maybe some. Silver rebounding uh, today, right now, it's up about uh, 66 cents and getting some bids here near the high of the day. And again, there's going to be some resistance right in the middle of this pattern up in here in the 27 and a half, 28 area. But it's reasonable to see it move back up into that area here pretty soon. You can see the silver pattern right in here, the silver pattern right in here. And now, as long as it you know holds above this level, it's not really worrisome. 2587. If it gets under 2471, it's over. It's done. 
That's a long way from here right now. I don't think that's going to happen, but that would be a cycle low support breakdown. If that happened, it would turn the intermediate patterns lower. That is not likely. Now, hopefully it holds that low right over there and even gets up here into those resistance areas, which I haven't put in the chart yet because I need to get that anchor point in here. So um, this uh, really looks like there's a potential to get back up into this mid range up over here in silver. You can see the gold low coming right here yesterday. So we overlaid the gold onto the silver and then beginning that bouncing period that we see in here. Silver period again still moving up in this uh, in this minor cycle. So this is a period you could get back up to the upside and we would guess that would happen because it is the highest probability in the silver market. So th that's a look at gold and silver on the short term. Silver not looking as threatened as gold does. They both really need to move up now and get out of these areas. Again, the magic number in gold uh, down around that 1767 area below that is just a terrible pattern. So uh, let's hope it heals itself and gets a good rally going right now. All right, I want to tell you um, this is uh, really a special announcement. We have expanded our level one membership and we have this special going on right now. We wanted to create an opportunity for all of the thousands of people that are first seeing what we do here at Ask Slim to be able to come in and really get a major taste of what we do, the type of work that we do. So we put we, we redid level one and made it less expensive with more content in it, just so that so many people could get in here and experience it. And I'm telling you, you're going to be blown away by what we have. So everything that's in this level one is available, and you'll and people that are in level two, three, and four all get this also. What do you get? Well, you get the Slimulator Momentum Tracker. This is an amazing app that we build with our own algorithms, over a thousand symbols, 20 different canned watch list groups in there, and you can essentially scan and sort on momentum conditions, and it will give you the, the information on individual groups. It gives you the information on multiple time frames. You will be blown away, and are some of the evidence uh, output that comes in there tells you whether it's uh, extremely bullish or bullish or neutral or, or bearish or extremely bearish all of that some of the evidence based on our algorithms you can just type in a symbol or you can look at the uh, individual can groups sorting amazing you're going to just you're not going to believe that stock index weekly report uh, this is created by Matt with extremely valuable technical analysis in there all of our charts uh, that we put out on the major indexes you get all of that uh, just uh, momentum uh, charts and graphic graphics you just won't believe what's in there spider ETF review weekly technical analysis on those major sectors a great weekly thing that Matt does also you will get our new trader and investor workbench here you can just have it's like a hub to ask slim and we have trade planning tools in there that were just developed where you can organize all of your work all of your thoughts prioritize it save it track your own analysis um, you, you, these are just some great forms that we created in there and lists that you can save. You can put in your own notes and save those. You can upload your own charts and save those. It's just spectacular. You're going to get the archive to this show, review, review our analysis in there. You're going to get Ask Slim live replays. These are 70 minute um, live shows that we do and sometimes level one members are invited in there uh, but you're going to get those replays they're just packed with analysis and a bunch of special member videos that we put in there all of that look at this huge list $14.95 a month and if you take it for a quarter it's only 30 bucks 10 bucks a month for all of this how can you not subscribe to this if you're interested in the markets you're going to love everything that's in here matt is putting together great uh, informational videos that will be available on everything that's in here so that you can really get a good feel 14.95 a month take it for a, a quarter for 30 bucks it is just fantastic information and this will give you a great sense for the type of work that we do here at ask slim for literally thousands of people and I think that joining this will give you a just a great opportunity to raise 
the uh, your uh, results just uh, to be able to r raise the amount of uh, education that you have your understandings of the markets fantastic right in here fourteen ninety five a month thirty bucks a quarter just go to askslim.com to join scroll down on the main page you'll see that special offer right over there and if you have any questions at all on this write to Matt at askslim.com M-A-T-T -T at askslim.com okay so now we're gonna look at the stock market uh, we'll look uh, with uh, at a one to three month view of the SPY the spiders this uh, chart right in here is a chart that we've been looking at at uh, coming into a corrective period for three months already, pointing to the period of late January through early March uh, as the time when a correction is likely to come. Our uh, downside projections for that have been raised based on the quality of momentum and the length of time of the rally. That's we don't do that uh, just on our own. We do it because the market tells us to, uh, and uh, that's what we've done. So we're still in this period of a correction. We've had a lot of questions, a lot of emails, a lot of comments that said, Slim, 4.5% down. You said it would be 6 to 7. Uh, is that it? You know, it's a three-day decline. Um, three day declines don't make corrections and you said that it was going to go to a uh, a level of uh, we were at 21 on the VIX you said it was going to double go to 35 to 40 it did that you know is that it well I don't think so actually because if the correction comes then I think we'll probably do that again we'll probably get up to those levels let's take a look here as we switch over to the SPY I still have the silver chart up here and we'll look over uh, at the weekly chart in SPY just gonna uh, bring up this big megaphone right over there and we're looking at these yellow corrective zones so each of those is a declining phase in a cycle the cycles in here uh, have been uh, uh, rather consistent except for the really long one that came uh, right well right over here long and right over here long so there the principle of variance is was really pr uh, pushed out uh, on these cycles but still you can see the amount of declines in each of these so this was about a month this was about a little less than a month this was about a month this was about 15 16 days right in here and this down bar that you see right over there was three and a half days, three days. That is not the correction. That is possibly just the, the, the shot across the bow, which is a warning. Uh, and we're still in this period of high potential for one of these corrective phases to come. Again, it's when the nesting comes down with the minor and dominant cycles, as you see right over here and right over here. And right over here is this period. Now, the um, the shorter term cyclical patterns expanded a little bit, which means that it pushes the expected low out. While we thought it would be the low sometime between the last week of February and the first week of March, it now pushes it out slightly into the second week of March. So it barely changes it, but only by a little bit. Again, this is what we're looking at right now, and that is this was one of the biggest up weeks right over here to an all-time high you really don't get you know four and a half five percent gain six almost seven percent in the russell uh moving up to all-time highs usually they just kind of chip away at the all-time highs but there's a buying panic going on right now and that's really clear and especially in in recovery stocks and in small caps uh, there's a ton of buying coming in this uh, upside level right up over here which is at around 390 uh, 393 I think it, uh, it looks like looks at maybe on the SPX chart we didn't think it was actually going to go for that but now it really looks like it will uh, 388 is the price it got up to today so using uh, up that using this zone right over here we pushed up these targets by a little bit uh, as uh, they moved up by two or three points so not very much so this six to seven percent de decline right over here takes you to this uh, intermediate 38.2 percent that is I mean uh, looking for a correction only to that level is a bullish call modest decline that we're looking for in there to that level 
if it really wanted to take a big hit, 347 would be 10% or what other people would call a full correction. I call corrections or the corrective periods when they decline in these cycles right over here. So it doesn't have to be 10% for me to be a correction. Uh, the right down over there, the, the major 38.2, which is a 17%, well, that's basically thrown out the window here because of the time frame. Now, it would be extremely rare, maybe once in a, in a decade, that you get that kind of a decline in this kind of a, a shape of a cycle. So what we're looking for in here is for this to peak, that this was just a little bit of a warning, uh, right in here, this 4.5% drop. The odds are very high you will get below that level, 368, and probably down to this level around 363 by the first, second week of March is the way that kind of times out uh, when we look at that. The Russell's got a little bit earlier pattern than that. Uh, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ point to this period out over here uh, right around the uh, March 9th to 14th uh, time frame is where that comes to. So we believe that this decline over here uh, will be followed by another move to new highs, test these highs, and that this is just kind of a first leg to what we think is a major top that's forming in here uh, that will um, give you what we believe will be a bad year. And I don't want to get too far into that discussion. This is really one to three months uh, where we're looking for a month down after this peak and then a couple of months up. But then the risks are really going to pick up out over here. And you can watch our year-end show to get that projection. Uh, if you uh, want to watch Market Week New Year's special uh, or an eclipse from there, you'll get an idea of, uh, on that. So that's posted on YouTube also uh, for anybody watching this on YouTube. So um, we are looking for this upside rally to be uh, ending really soon and then get into this corrective period. And it's uh, in an upward buying panic spike right now. And you can see that by the percentage gain that it has right now moving to an all-time high. So super amount of strength, all of the uh, short term, all of the intraday, all of the short term and the intermediate term momentum indicators are all strong. All of the cyclical patterns are all strong. There is nothing that we look at right now that is negative for the market. Other than the fact that this was an engulfing pattern, it warns that these areas are areas that sellers are coming in and uh, that uh, is a good probability we'll start to see that again soon. Yes, I believe it will get down to this 363 level by sometime in mid-March. And yes, I believe we'll see the VIX move up into the mid-30s or higher again uh, during this period. And yes, I think that the if we do get the correction as expected, we will see the market strong again into that springtime period uh, with uh, the markets uh, edging out new highs. Uh, lots of people talking about 400, 420 in the S&P uh, in the spiders. That actually, I think, could happen out here in this May-June period. So right now, I just think it's time for them to get tired and have this very modest correction that we're talking about uh, for the stock market over this next, we'll just call it um, four or five weeks is what we're looking at right now. So that is a look at the stock market, the SPY on a weekly chart. Um, the one to three month outlook is what we're looking at right in here. I hope you found that interesting and valuable. And of course, you can learn all about cycle analysis by going to our workshop uh, page at the top of the website and watch the video in there uh, that you'll see about cycle analysis. It's no cost to you. You'll see the whole um, uh, the whole table of contents to the 20 video modules that are in there. Fantastic workshop. So many people have invested in that and really you'll never look at charts in the same way. Look at the beautiful rhythms in this market and look at that giant megaphone that we're looking at right in here uh, and way up past the top of it. That is super extended and very likely you'll see a move back to the 34 week moving average as you see it always moves back down to and that's right out over here. Not that big of a deal, right? Not even a 10% decline, or maybe that, to hit that. That's it for the uh, look at the stock market. I hope you found everything we brought you today to be extremely valuable. I want to make sure that you do go to AskSlim.com and explore our site. 
Um, you can just become a free member if you want to and look at the uh, unbelievable deal we have for level one. Subscribe to this channel on YouTube and like the video. Make sure you watch our member videos in the playlist and you'll get a good idea of some other things that we do in past shows. Follow us on Twitter at Ask Slim. And for any questions you have about our memberships, the content, anything at all, uh, specials that we have offered, please do write to Matt at AskSlim.com and he will be able to help you uh, with that. Uh, I, I just hope that this was a fantastic show for you. I want you to be unbelievably careful because it is so crazy out there. And we're always wishing you great trading. <laughs>